knowledge your eternal glory lead us by your holy spirit to a right understanding of your most holy worship grant us to be joined together in unity by your spirit that we may be seen as your own people a royal priesthood and a holy nation through jesus christ our lord we confess holy lord that we fall short of your glory we have received without gratitude so many gifts from you we have often murmured over the burdens you have laid upon us we have doubted your love and have been unfaithful to the vows we made to you we have wasted our strength on vain pursuits and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves O oh Lord, be merciful to us, your wayward children. Forgive us and let your saving word, your sins are forgiven, one's head on earth, be renewed from heaven. Father, cast us not away from your presence and help us not to quench your Holy Spirit. As true disciples, may we, like our Lord, freely welcome the toils and sufferings of our humanity. May we do every work as unto you and always rejoice in your many benefits. Fill us with patience O others and make us ready to help and be quick to forgive. Hear us, O Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. Hello, be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A quapim presbytery choir. We now sing an anthem. After that, we'll hear the scripture readings.
verse 2 to verse 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brethren return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the world. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. He will raise, we will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders. This is the word of the Lord. Our second scripture reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 5 to 10. Hebrews chapter 10, the verses 5 to 10. Let us hear the word of God. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First, he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, the word of God. Amen. Shall now hear an anthem from the harmonious choral, after which you will read the third, the third scripture reading. <laughs>
The gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 39 through 55. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Lisbeth. And it happened when Lisbeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe lived in her womb, and Lisbeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done things, great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. This is the word of God. Ya can can semua eto so mi ensano de be hun afri asempa no serial look at trauma yen eti ba akon e se mu adu asan kron adiko si adu onum enum look at asempa eti ba akon en se mu adu asan kron adiko si adu onum enum kristo mu adofo o ma yen tie ewade asem Na enani mu Maria the Ahore sorry call people so you the crew ni mu. No call Zachariah fee ko chia Elizabeth. Ne ba asa Elizabeth te Maria and chia no. Ako kwa no hru ni yem. Na ordinary case e ka se. Ensra ne mu we sra wo mem we sra wo yam ade. Na e yi free Se Maria de Nina eba menche na she gonchi echo amasumo ape akoko anu e de ehusi ehusan furu wo meyem na ehira ne ni awaje de ifri se erade aba yenche na waye ade nyina wonu mu na Maria kan se me kra kan fo ewrade na ma je kwa nya akopon ho na me ho 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 sane no e pri se wa fe na funa ahia asetra na wa fe na fe e pri ne i want to at was only na be pre me shira e pri se otun fo no aya de kese amame na ni din ene kron kron na ne mo bro hun wo won a wo suo no suo na wo to ato aso a edi suo mu nyina na wo din abasa aya ho den die wa pan sam wo won a wo ya han time wo comment suye mu wa tu etu mfo everywhere him aso na wa ja at the four coin ye from pain or the Nepa Asha Wonga, a com Eddie Wonga. Now, 
wapeja wonga ehia won waso na kwa israel se odi be kai ni mbru hu sania o ka chere yen yanom ama abraham ene na se for da ya mema awurde asim Lord and Father, we are gathered in your presence to hear you speak to us. We pray that in this time we may hear you give us a message appropriate for the occasion. Make this a time of prayer and meditation. Dear Lord, Amen. When you are this year, I soon come on. 
let me first take opportunity to wish greet and welcome certain personalities who have been with us this morning and are worshipping with us. But before then, I'd like to welcome you all, believers and people of God, to this special service as announced. You've come from far and wide. You've come to witness this occasion and to grace it. And for that reason, we want to say thank you for your presence. We also acknowledge with the presence of our ecumenical brothers who have come in your numbers, who have been very supportive of us, even in our crisis situation. We believe that we can enjoy your comfort, support, in all that we do. We note with great delight and thanks the presence of Nananum and their entourage. The presence of government officials, delegation, and dignitaries accompanied by the media personnel, we say you are most welcome. One cannot help but also acknowledge the contribution of the equipping presbytery and also Grace Congregation for placing their facilities at our disposal to make this event possible. We say thank you and God richly bless you. Beloved in the Lord, we are in the Advent season, having spent the last three Sundays reflecting on the importance of the Christmas event. Today being the fourth Sunday leads us to Christmas. This period, as you may be aware, is fraught with excesses, but it's also a time of reflection and gift giving. And we will celebrate it as such. The first passage is from the prophet Micah. He points out to the fact that despite the wealth and popularity of Jerusalem, the city and its people will be destroyed. In contrast, a tiny village called Bethlehem within Judea will be the birthplace of the Savior King, our Messiah. This prophecy alludes to the birth of a Savior hundreds of years before it was realized. His reign, we are told, will be great and bring to mankind peace which passes all understanding, not as the world gives. In the second reading, the author re-echoes the coming of a savior of mankind for a purpose. The savior of mankind for a purpose. His coming, his obedience and service to mankind caused him his suffering and ultimate death on the cross. This offer has been a great event and of importance to all mankind of which we present here and generations even after us have been beneficiaries and will be. We will therefore continue to remind ourselves of this great event until it's coming again. It 
it will be our responsibility therefore to go and share this eternal message to all mankind beginning from our Jerusalem to the lands far off the Lucan narrative is leading us to an appreciation of the events that were to come before the great savior is born the unceremonious visit of Mary to Elizabeth and the prophetic statement of Elizabeth that Mary was the mother of her Lord went a long way to affirm what she heard from the angel of the Lord. It was not a mere greeting. It was prophetic and faith-based assertion. Added to that is the popular hymn or song we call Magnificat. This song points us to a further assertion that our God is a champion of the poor, despised, and oppressed. Beloved, we are being called to encourage all God's people with their various talents and gifts, with a message handed over to us generations upon generations, to go and share with all we meet, our families, neighbors, and those we are yet to meet. After all, the greatest gift we can give to our loved ones is the gift of a savior, who is Christ. The gospel, we are told, is Jesus, and Jesus is the gospel. And is the new and precious gift coming to us at such a time with all the limitations and opportunities. And therefore to you comes all as I appeal modestly to you to take action. To you our moderator, right Reverend Professor Joseph Ubri Yebua Mante. I wonder if there's any space in your passport for all this. But that's your name given to you by your father. We are, I may say, delighted to be associated with your election to such a high office. It is the will of God and he knows best. Allow God to use you to achieve his purpose. Simple and straightforward. Like Joseph of past years, you have been prepared academically socially, religiously to be equipped adequately to take on the mantle of office. We believe that the good Lord has called you and you are also to give of your best in the circumstance because he has given you the spiritual enablement to discharge the work he has assigned to you. Therefore, face the work with the confidence it deserves because you are capable of doing it. The calling is not a matter of pride, but of service. And you should do well to remind yourself daily of this fact. He has in the past used 
insignificant things and people to achieve his purpose. You are more than insignificant to him. Because today, the membership of the church represented by a few gathered here are traditional and even national leaders who have come here do so with the understanding that a time will come when they will have an opportunity to hold you to task regarding whatever you do that is the more reason that you should take seriously the solemn vows you are about to make to the hearing of our God in whose presence you are, the representatives of the church, and all observers gathered here. You will have the opportunity to tap on the rich resources of your council members old and young, rich and poor. Your directors, those endowed people of this church, and all people of God. The constitution and order is there to guide you to achieve this purpose. Time was when you might have had doubt and uncertainties. Time was when you might have been fitful in temper and hasty for quick returns. But I believe that this is the right time, since God's time is the best. However, however, should God in his wisdom and grace enable you to dream dreams or have a vision, do not be disobedient to God's call and promptings. For it might be one of the ways and not the only way one of the ways God wants you to direct you to draw a road map to guide you to where he wants you to lead the church and the people of God and for that matter the Presbyterian Church of Ghana permit me therefore to land by saying that we are all aware that we've gone through a crisis situation before. Unprecedented in the annals of the church, but we've come through gracefully. The faith of God's people and our ecumenical brothers and sisters have been such a help during the period of our intercession. And so if we today say that we are victorious, we mean we are victorious in this struggle. After all, the hymnist is right in affirming that asma yukremwin eye Yesu Christo dia na se eye ni dia nti ye nim we believe that you are not going to spoil the church. You are going to increase it and make it more open and aggressive and forward looking. Therefore, should any crisis come, we never know. But we want to assume. Should any re-engage us in any form or confront us and test our faith, remember 
you have a God and that God is faithful and he will not fail you or forsake you you can also count on the support of the faithful people the family members your admirers I believe you have some and the advice and intercession of all believers and I believe all will be well God bless you
and is from the editorial board of the Trinity Journal of Church and Society. It's an ecclesiastical function. A right Reverend Professor Gil Wankante has been a minister of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana since 1981. So as he stands before you, he has said, for 37 years. Was one, he once said, as a primitive chairperson, which is for the sake of our mentalist brethren here, and the equivalent of a bishop in the And he said in the public presbytery of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana from the year 2006 to 2011. He has held pastoral positions in the Presbyterian, in Presbyterian churches in the Doom, Marseille, specifically Ramsia and they are here in their numbers to support him. Obwasi, when he served as district pastor, Claremont in California, Pumona in California, and Fontana also in California. He also served at the Trinity United Church in the Dome, the Atomic Hills Congregation in Accra, and now, until he was appointed or elected monitor, he was tied to the faith of as a minister. The right Reverend Professor Mante also served in the ecclesiastical leadership of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana as a member of the Church's General Assembly Council from the year 2006 to 2011. He was also the president of the National Ministers Conference, a conference which brings all Presbyterian ministers together. He did that for seven years. In addition to all this, he was also a key member of the Church's Committee on Ministry for 15 years and was part of the team that revised the Church's limited books, Constitution and Manual of Order. Furthermore, the Right Reverend Professor Leo Wymonte served as the 2004 General Council International Coordinator of the World Alliance of Reformed Churches with headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. Now the World Communion of Reformed Churches in Hanover, Germany. And he has also served as an executive committee member of the Christian Council of Ghana since the year 2011. His international exposure. Professor Martin has visited and had exposure in several other countries in Africa, Europe, and the Americas. His publications. Right Reverend Professor Adil Wymonte has published eight books and several academic articles in refereed journals. The Right Reverend Professor Monte is also a member of the board of Adun Partnership International based in California, USA. He is also chairman of the Adun Foundation Ghana. As many of you are aware, he once hosted the GTD program in the light and had been preaching and teaching in several villages and cities in Ghana and elsewhere. Professor Mate and his wife, Florence, are co founders of the Adon Foundation in Ghana, which is an NGO which supports over 400 children and students in school every year. His beloved wife, Florence, is the executive director of the Adun Foundation. Papa Moreta, I present the right Reverend Professor Jen Owan Mante, supported by his wife, to you, and our operator, to induct him into office. Thank you. Shall we all join our hearts together as we sing the Brazilian hymn 420?
dearly beloved, we've met here as representatives of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, we welcome Right Reverend Professor Joseph Obiri Yebua Mante, who has been elected to serve as a moderator of the General Assembly of the Church for a period of five years, as is defined by the Constitution of the Church, and to induct him into office. We thank God that he continually calls men and women into the service of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, and that he equips them to labor in the fellowship of faith and to build up his church on earth. The Presbyterian Church of Ghana acknowledges the Apostles' Creed as expressing the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith and the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as the word of God and as the decisive rule of faith and practice, containing all things necessary for our salvation. Now, the vows. Right Reverend Professor Joseph Ubriyebua Mante, in view of this declaration, I ask you now to answer these questions. Do you again affirm your faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And do you confess anew Jesus Christ as your only Savior and Lord? I do. Do you, in the presence of God, and this congregation promise to commit yourself wholly to this new trust and responsibility and diligently discharge all duties of your office in accordance with the vows you made at your ordination. I do. Do you solemnly promise to be faithful to the Presbyterian Church of Ghana and at all times uphold the Holy Scripture and the Constitution of the Church. I do. To you who are witnesses of this holy event, will you faithfully support and uphold Right Reverend Professor Joseph Obri Yebuamante in his new charge as moderator. Now the former. At this juncture, we would like to invite the moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana to append his signature in the Chronicle of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana.
God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, you covered all things in heaven and on earth. You have from the beginning of the day the world church, the ministry of great consolation. We thank you for your goodness in giving us and not great time serve your church. Bless you in full measure with the gifts of your spirit that the day truly and with demonstration of spirit and power serve your people. And do it with power and purity of life so that in all our days we may faithfully sell you to the glory of your great and holy name. O Lord, the sanctifier of the faithful, visit us with your love and mercy. Prepare our hearts to receive your word whenever you speak to us through him. Nourish your people with spiritual blessings. Encourage us to do works of righteousness and love in this church. In your great mercy, keep the Presbyterian Church of Ghana always in the unity of the spirit and the bond of love through Jesus Christ our Lord whom with you and the Holy Spirit we worship and glorify as one God. Amen. Eradi, eradi, nuncho ba, nuncho ba. We sing prayerfully.
yet to uphold me in the seven days and its challenge. To you and your service, I will hold myself. From the Lord, I will hold myself. Till my memory is a record of your mighty works, enlighten my understanding with the light of the Holy Spirit. Be all of the desires of my heart and will. Center in what you will have been given. Be always with me, O God, in carrying on the beauties of my ministry, and grant that by the energy, brightness of him we will, many will be drawn into your blessed kingdom. All this I ask, receive of the Son of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
Mrs. Frema Osei of Paris, representing the President of the Republic of Ghana to deliver a congratulatory message. Thank you. The moderator, Reverend Professor Joseph Obi Yemua Kumanti, the former moderators, the leadership of other denominations present, honorable ministers of state, members of parliament, Nanano, distinguished invited guests, and the congregation. I bring you greetings from His Excellency the President, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuadu, who would have liked so much to be here, but due to emergency situation that he could not join us. The President and the government present heartfelt Congratulations to our new moderator, Re Right Reverend Professor Joseph Obriya Boamanti, the moderator for the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Government believes that the church is a very important aspect of society and continues in many ways engage with the church leadership. For instance, as you are aware, the president has attended your annual general assembly meeting in Abetifi. He believes in the continued partnership between the church and the state for the accelerated development of our nation. The president values very much the role the church plays in inculcating moral upbringing and discipline to our youth. Even at this time, when government is investing so heavily in educating all our children to the high senior high school level, these investments would be in vain if they are not translated into positive behavior among the youth. The right Reverend Professor Joseph Obri Yabuamanti, the President commends the good work that you did at the Trinity Theological Seminary. And he is convinced that you will bring the same dynamic leadership to the Presbyterian Church of Ghana to grow from strength to strength. It is on this note that the president wishes to convey that he want he wish you God's bountiful mercies, God's bountiful grace on this very important journey. And we wish the Presbyterian Church of Ghana very well and Afinshiapa. Thank you. We are grateful to the Chief of Staff for standing in for the President. Thank you very much, Bama. Now we are about to hear the new moderator's address. So, let us stand and sing the first stanza of 451, President Him, and then we will invite the moderator, Right Reverend Professor Joseph Obriye Boamante, to address us. President Him 451.
Excellency Nana de Dan Kwaku, for the President of the Republic of Ghana. I'm very grateful to you for being here today. Her Ladyship, Mr. Faya Akufu, Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana, and my dear sister, thank you for coming. The chiefs and people of Ekwapim traditional area, the chiefs and people of Kukufu in the Asante tradition, as Kukufu Asante traditional area, whose paramount chief has traveled all the way from the Asante region to be here. Nana Kukufu Hene Medawasi, Papa, 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 God bless you so much. The man is over 80 years old and he decided that he would still come all the way from Kukufu in the Asante region. Nana, God bless you so much. Honorable ministers of state, honorable members of parliament, members of the General Assembly Council and past principal officers of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, heads of churches here present, clerk of the General Assembly, members of the Diplomatic Corps, our ecumenical guests, my colleagues in the academy who are here in their numbers, particularly the president and faculty of my dear Trinity Theological Seminary, vice chancellors who have come, rectors and presidents of universities who are here, my dear members of the National Accreditation Board of the Republic of Ghana who are here in their numbers, members of the Research Committee in Humanities of the University of Ghana who are here and so on. I am so grateful, I am very, very grateful. Fellow ministers of the gospel who are stewards of the mysteries of Christ. Friends of the media, brothers and sisters in Christ, acknowledgments and thank yous. Let me start off my address by saying a big thank you to God Almighty who called me into ministry when I was in my mother's womb and who has made this day possible. It is only by God's grace that I am what I am. It is only by God's grace that I am here today. Please, when you go out and you see God, kindly tell him that I humbly say that I salute him and I'm grateful to him for bringing me this far. So when you go out and you see God, tell him, Morita says, he salutes you. I really thank His Excellency Nana Adudanko Akufuado, who actually was driving in this direction but had to return because of an emergency. Please, when you go and you meet him, tell him that I'm very, very grateful. Very, very, very grateful. He's been a good friend even before he became president, and I'm grateful. Join me also to say a big thank you to my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Ogrimanti of blessed memory who brought me into this world and nurtured me when I was a baby. Let me thank my mother in particular, Mrs. Rachel Mercy Manti, for being the first person who introduced me to faith in Jesus Christ and for teaching me how to pray both at home and through the Bible study and prayer group. Anybody who is a Bible study and prayer group member who is here, I say thank you. Let me also acknowledge my brothers and sisters whom I grew up with some have passed away. My brother George, sister Teresa, my sister Grace, my brother Billy, Rachel, Edward, and Sammy. And I say a big thank you also to the Scripture Union of Ghana and to the Ghana Fellowship of Evangelical Students. And I've noted that the chairman of the Council of Scripture Union and the general director are here. I want to say a very big thank you to SU and to Gaffes for the profound spiritual impact these organizations had on my life when I was young. During my high school days at Kumasi High School, Scripture Union had a powerful impact on my life, and I'm eternally grateful to the Lord for the work of the Scripture Union in this country. I am glad that some of the old boys of Kumasi High School have actually traveled all the way from Kumasi to be here, although I left that school some 44 years ago. Mrante, I am grateful. I further say a big thank you to the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, 
where I have served as a minister of the gospel for the past 37 years, for having the greatest influence in my life from the cradle to the present. Much of what I have become today, I attribute to the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, and so I say a big thank you to PCG. I should not forget my kindergarten teacher, my primary school teachers, and my childhood friends who were very patient with me during my growth in childhood. And I wish to thank the chiefs and people of Akriapim, especially the Presbyterians in this presbytery and those in Grace Congregation here, particularly the minister in charge and the evangelist Dr. Ebenezer Ata Aboa of Perth. I have promoted you to general now. You are an officer, so and now you are a major general. For the marvelous preparations they have made to make this program successful. Please, God bless you so much. Yet, I want to above all, say a big thank you to my wife, Florence, who has been with me through thick and thin. Florence, I nominate you for the Best Wife Award. And to our own grown-up children, Lydia, Lydia is just waiting for me to, to be inducted so that she can deliver her first baby. And our daughter Jennifer came all the way from the U.S. to have her wedding last, just last week. And so this week has been wonderful. And our son Andrew is also waiting for this induction so he can graduate from the University of Ghana. I say thank you to them and to all our 21 children. Those of you who don't know, I have 21 children. Um, I say a big thank you to all of them for their support and their prayers, and to all the extended families from Latte, Ekrapim, and Kokofu in the Asante region. I say thank you, and I love you all. At this induction, I wish to immediately state that the Presbyterian Church of Ghana is not one of these newer churches that just started yesterday. The Presbyterian Church of Ghana has been in existence for 190 years. So on the 18th of December this year, this church shocked 190 years. And that greater moderators have gone ahead of me. Even in my adulthood, I recognize such moderators as moderator Tenti Misa. I saw him with my eyes. I was grown up. I was at Trinity. When I was going to Trinity, he was the moderator. I.H. Frimpong, D.A. Cranting, Anthony Bacon, Sam Prempe, Professor Emmanuel Mate, Professor uh, Sifas Omenyo. And I am humbled to be, uh, to be appointed to tread in their footsteps because these are great people. This church has borne witness to faith in Jesus Christ in this nation and beyond in all aspects of life including education, health, agricultural stations, etc. Presbyterian Church of Ghana is not a small church. And so I am deeply humbled. I'm, I mean really humbled. I mean really humbled to be appointed the 18th moderator of this great church. And I accept this position with humility based on divine grace. During my 16 months, now I realize I have only about 59 months to go. I'm giving five years, it's 60 months. One month is almost past, so uh, uh, 59 months. I do not intend to create any other vision apart from what the Lord himself has given us, namely to go into the, all the world and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Nor do I wish to depart from the strategic vision of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, which is to be a Christ-centered, self-sustaining, and a growing church. We have a vision from the Lord, and we are a missionary church, and we have been so for the past 190 years. This is our goal and our passion, and this is what we will continue to do as a church. Yet I know that in every given period, it is important for a good leader to rephrase and restate the vision of the organization in such a way that the people in the organization can follow with ease. This we will do under three key strategic thrusts, namely 
the spiritual witness of the church, the moral witness of the church, and the social witness of the church. Now the spiritual witness of the church, prayer and worship. The church of Jesus Christ exists first and foremost in the presence of God. It is from this divine presence that the church gets its strength for spiritual, moral, and social witness. We will therefore continue to put emphasis on prayer and worship in our church. By this I mean prayer and worship that bring congregants into divine presence when they come to church. The church is not a place for entertainment, but it is a space for actual divine encounter. Of course, I am aware of the several prayers that go on in our part of the world that are only self-serving and do not bring congregants into actual divine presence, nor do they bring any serious transformation in people's lives. This is not the kind of spirituality that we want. We want a Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-filled, Holy Spirit-transforming Christianity, a Christianity that brings serious moral, spiritual, economic, and environmental development to our societies. Still under our spiritual witness, I want to talk about repentance and holiness. There has been much talk about evangelism, discipleship, and church growth in our church and churches. But I dare say that there is one basic ingredient that we are missing, and that is being moved to a state of deep and continuous repentance before the Lord. Churches grow properly when church members are moved towards a state of serious and continuous repentance before the Lord. So we will all seek the face of the Lord together so that under no circumstance will our hearts be occupied with pride and sin, but repent of our sins daily and seriously. When our hearts are unrepentant, the motivation for evangelism is low and sometimes nil. May the Holy Spirit move us towards repentance and holiness. Then we ourselves will be moved to bear witness to the Christ who lives in us. As a church, we will pursue the Lord in deep repentance and holiness. For without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. And church growth in the history of Christianity, there were some who underwent serious spiritual exercises for their own sake, staying in their monasteries and convents with virtually no spiritual impact on others. This is not what we are meant for. We will undergo spiritual, serious repentance and holiness for church growth. This is because we have a great commission to fulfill. So let us begin to borrow from the government one Presbyterian, one soul mission. If we do and do it well, we will grow greatly in geometric proportions. I pray that by God's grace, we will grow from around 1 million to 1.5 million members during the about 59 months left for me to complete my tenure as a moderator. I have prayed and asked God for help that at least we should move to not less than 1.5 million. A youth-focused church. Statistics from the Index Mundi indicate that about 72% of Ghanaians are below 36 years, and over 90% of Ghana's population is under 56 years old. 90%. This means that, as I'm standing here, I belong to less than 10% of Ghana's population, and that any church or government that does not direct its attention to the youth will definitely die. We will therefore reorganize our priorities so that we will be youth and children focused. I would love to see us start a young missionaries organization, as was done of old by the Basel Evangelical Mission Society. I do recall that when Andreas Rees came to Ghana, he was in his 20s, and most of the missionaries were in their 20s. So I'm thinking about some young Presbyterians, particularly those in NUSG and YPG, to get ready for good missionary work. If I'm to borrow again from government, this would be Presbyterian NAPCO. <laughs> to this end, we will try and set up a strong and a powerful mission fund. From this, we will reach out all over the world, buy motorbikes for our catechists and our missionaries that we are going to appoint, for our workers, build pavilions and churches, build more health centers and schools. So if God has blessed and endowed you, Think about our missionary fund and come and support with all your heart. Now, moral witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the fundamental issue for the Christian is that, unlike some other gods, our God, Jehovah God, is a thoroughly moral God. Moral integrity is therefore very important for anyone who says that he or she worships God. In the Bible, one huge difference between the God of Israel and the gods of the surrounding nations was clear. The God of Israel would not tolerate immorality and unrighteousness. In most of the other religions, the gods were amoral, but the God of Israel is thoroughly a moral God. Anyone, therefore, who worships Yahweh should never forget this, for this is the reason why Yahweh sometimes fled up against his own people. Yahweh cannot tolerate evil or immorality or unrighteousness. However, there seems to be a faulty start in some forms of Christian worship in our country. In that in Ghana, people seem to separate prayer and anointing and deliverance from serious morality. This makes one doubt the kind of God most people are actually worshipping. Within these five years, we wish to lift up moral integrity. If it is true that over 70% of Ghanaians are Christians, then we should see some serious sense of moral integrity in this country. We will therefore embark on a serious moral crusade. We will need to see integrity in relation to both the acquisition and sharing of money and resources in the churches and in the country. We will need to see integrity in creation expressed in basic cleanliness in our hearts, homes, and environments. We should make sure that Christians in this country understand the earliest commandment of God for us to till the earth and keep it. Genesis 2.15. Let us all strive to make our Presbyterian communities the cleanest communities in the whole country. Let environmental cleanliness be our hallmark. I pray that we could have a slogan. When they say Presbyterian, they say we are clean. Something like that. Let's clean our waters. Let's clean our atmospheres and stop polluting our environment. We will need to see integrity expressed in discipline with respect to work, time, driving on our roads, etc. We must embark on serious moral crusade, otherwise the prevalence of immorality can drive any group of Christians into irrelevance. We will need to see serious integrity expressed in the way we treat our women, in the way we treat our children, and the physically challenged in our societies. Something must change here. We surely need to embark on a serious moral crusade as a church. Now, social witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. When I'm talking about social witness, I'm talking about it in two forms. A, social service, and B, advocacy, or what we also call the prophetic voice of the church. When I go to the streets to feed the hungry, people are happy, and that is called social witness. And they will say, oh, this reverend minister is so great, he's a saint. But when I ask politicians to reduce their expenditures, so that we will have more money to feed the poor, then people say the Reverend Minister is indulging in politics. Now, the two are the same. This is prophetic witness of the church. It is called the social action or advocacy of the church. When as a church we engage in social service or development, we do not do it for any government, but we do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus has taught us both the vertical and horizontal dimensions of ministry, where we direct ministry from our inner spirits to the Lord, and also where we direct it to our fellow human beings. For the latter, Jesus says, as you do it for the least of these, you have done it for me. Matthew 25, 40. It is also seen in the greatest of all commandments, which is to love the Lord with all our strength, our soul, and our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So from time immemorial, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana has taken our social witness seriously. So now we have 2,400 basic Presbyterian schools, 33 senior high schools, five colleges of education, three vocational schools, four nurses training and midwifery schools, a university, two research institutions, namely a Prophet Crystal Institute, an interface research and resource center. We are an important sponsoring church of Trinity Theological Seminary, one of the founders. We have several health facilities. We have several agricultural stations. Once ago, one, some time ago, we, we owned the UTC. Those of you who are old, you know, you know UTC. We brought cocoa to Ghana. Presbyterian Church brought cocoa to Ghana through one of our missionary boys. 
In the history books know him as Tatekwashi, but we know him as a Presbyterian missionary boy. So, yeah, he was serving as a Presbyterian missionary boy. And so if Ghana has done well through Kuku, uh, I can even some more Presbyterian. <laughs> what I pray that we do for the next 59 months is to maintain and improve upon all these our social witness. Let us take good care of our schools, our health facilities, and our agricultural stations. Because we do not do them for any government, too, but as part of our Christian witness. Through these social programs, let us make sure that we draw people to Christ. They are not just social programs but they are our social witness. They are part of Christian mission. For example, I shall be very grateful if Presbyterian congregations and districts would at least paint their Presbyterian basic schools and keep maintenance that every two years, paint their schools. Whether your children attend those schools or not, is immaterial. We do not have to wait for any minister of state to ask us to maintain our schools. We know better from the Bible. When we do it, we do it for the Lord. Another aspect of our social witness, as I said, is the advocacy or prophetic role that we play as a church. I must confess that I really love the passion with which the leadership of this current government wants to tackle our social problems and corruption in particular. Congratulations to government on that. Yet, I must say that as a church, the Lord will not forgive us if we do not speak the mind of God on social issues. The God of the Bible has a heart for the poor and marginalized. So we will speak against any policy that will increase poverty and marginalization of any group of persons in this country. May the Lord give us wisdom to undertake this aspect of our ministry seriously. It is a Christian ministry of social justice and it has no political favorites. When I give food to the hungry, you clap for me. But as I said, when you are doing something that will not help us have money to feed the hungry, and I say, don't get angry, I will be doing the same thing. Now to conclude, let me kindly ask you all to seriously promise to pray for me and my family and for the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. I have never been a moderator before. I have never walked this way before. So if I make a mistake and you come and you exhaust the mistake, you are wasting your time. I have not walked the way before. Just show me this is a better way and then I will go. But you come and tell me. And <laughs> and his children with both our prayers and our substance. Now the Lord says in Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Presbyterian Church, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, the Lord says. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland in our time. May the Lord do something new in our lives. May the Lord do something new in our church. May the Lord do something new in our country. May the Lord literally make a way in every desert area in our lives. May the Lord literally make streams in every wasteland in our lives and in our church and in our motherland, Ghana and beyond. That saith the Lord of hosts. I am the Lord. This is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place. And new things I declare. Before they spring forth into being, I announce them to you. Lord, Lord, Lord Almighty, I stand here to say we are ready. 
do something in our lives, do something in our church, do something in our nation. We are ready to work for you, Lord. Lord, use us as you would. Now unto the Most High God, who raised again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, even the King of glory, be all honor and dominion and power, even now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. And thank you. God bless you. God bless you richly. the pleasure to invite the Equipim Traditional Council to make a presentation to the moderator.
every time you speak Kamina. We hope that your rich pastoral experience in the service of the church and the nation. Ecumenically, you cooperated and worked well in the church. The church is in the international area. You expect it to charge your pastoral duties sort of the general well-being of all Christians, among them are the traditional leaders. A champion of uh, development, you have shown absolute commitment to the goal of Rahman by tirelessly supporting Rahman's quest of infrastructural development. Proudly celebrating the service and outstanding group they in ensuring that the unity of Rahman became a reality, assisting in bringing together all the necessary and great persons uh, with such a skill and tact.
The driver of Archbishop Akofi, please come round now. National Reputation Board. I stand on the protocols already established to stand. Right to friend, Joseph Okuri Yabua Mante has been with the National Accreditation Board since 2011. And this is the citation from NAB to him. And it's for Joseph Okuri Yabua Mante. Justice and grand duties drive on the command from the Lord suitable time, which transcends every human understanding and the power dictating God's own noble hands to provide mankind with safety. Ogri, omnipotent Savior's creation of benevolence and sanity, shined into this beautiful world to preach, refresh, and a good news to all, to all individuals towards eternal salvation. You rose from a humble beginning, ever ready to learn and to obey. Yes, both teacher and honorable father, serve holy God with your mind, clean heart, and wisdom, which have elevated you high to become an embodiment of mentorship, which originates from above. Attentive man of God of all time, you do not discriminate, but stretch forth widely the anointed hands, inviting all the sunlight. Everlasting Father has made me, I am presented by the National Accreditation.